So hello and welcome to the computer lab. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this Ngenius switch, which Ngenius kindly sent me for me to have a look at. So it has been sent to me free of charge. However, they're not paying for this video. Uh, so it'll be an honest view of what I see. So the switch itself, the model number is uh, ECS1112FP. Um, it's an eight port PoE switch and it is cloud enabled. So if you're gonna um, buy into the Ingenious system, um, it's best going into their website because they do uh, two different, well, three different ways really for connecting to these types of switches. This particular one is cloud enabled and there's an access point here. You can see it says Ingenious Cloud. Uh, the other one that they do is the Sky Key, which is uh, a little uh, box like this, which has the software installed on it, which is Easy Master software. So you can have these on site. Uh, to control your devices or you can use the cloud enabled stuff i tend to prefer this stuff uh, it's more modern looking it's easier to understand once you get into the system so with all that being said what i'm going to do for this video i'm going to unbox the actual switch itself show you what's inside the box what you get for your money and then what i'll do from there is um, we'll go into the cloud on the computer and i'll show you how to adopt this particular device into your cloud account and I'll also, if I get a chance, is just plug the access point in, just show you how the POE works on this particular switch. So if that is something you're interested in, then please do carry on watching this video. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna unbox it first, um, but I, I do encourage you, if you are gonna go down this route, just check which system to buy into and make sure it's got the cloud enabled if that's what you're gonna do. So let's have a look what you get in the box. So you get the usual power lead box. I think I'll have a look at that in a second. A quick installation guide and then the switch itself. Nothing else in there. We'll get rid of these bits of foam. So that's the switch itself. Um, and I'll go through the actual spec in a second and I'll just read it off their website, their uh, product highlights. Uh, but you've got an eight port um, PoE switch. I think it's 130 watts. You've got a console uh, connector on the end. You've got a couple of LEDs on the side. You've got a power, power LED, fault, PoE max, LAN mode and PoE mode and an LED mode um, switch on the side of that and also a reset button. Uh, you've got two uh, uplink ports and two fiber uh, uplink ports here. Um, so I think they are one gigabyte. Uh, so two two gigabit ethernet ports and two dual speed SFP, SFP fiber uplink ports on the side there. On the rear power connector, it's a fan built in, so it's not a fanless design. Uh, and usually the PoE ones, well, I was saying that some of the new ones are fanless, but um, anyway, it's got a fan built in to keep it cool. Couple of vents either side, uh, and like I said, I've gone through the front already. What I'll do, I'll put that there. I have got a power lead here, um, and just while we're going through these bits, I might just plug it in so it's powering up um, while we just talk about what you get in the box. So I'm going to connect that up, and I've got a, a network uh, which I'm going to connect it to and plug it into one of the uplinks, like so. We'll probably hear the fan kick in as it gets going. So, what do you get? Else, do you get a small bag of screws, some rubber feet. You get a, a console lead for connecting it to the console port. You also get some rack mount ears. So these sort of go on the side like so if you wanted to rack mount it uh, and then you attach them with the screws. We're not gonna be rack mounting it, but you do get them in the box and you also get a power lead. So that's all the usual stuff that you get. Nothing, there's the fan kicking in. So nothing exciting in there. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of the installation guide. And then what we'll do now is we'll go on the computer and I'll show you how to adopt this onto the uh, your cloud account. So if you haven't done already, you need to, um, if you're going down this route, what you do is create an account on the uh, website, which is cloud.ngenius.ai. And I'll bring this screen up now so you can see it. So I have a shortcut here and that just takes me to the cloud.ngenius.ai. And this is the dashboard. So obviously you'll log in with your account details. Um, and this is the standard dashboard that you get. The first thing that you need to do, I'm not gonna to go too much into detail how to create accounts because I might do a separate video on it, um, but in the top burger menu here, you just click on that, the three little lines, and then in here, yours will probably say org because I think it's standard uh, as an organization. 
you need to create a new one. So you click on the little blue icon and you add an organization. You can see I've got three already in there. Uh, and then these are obviously these are multiple different sites. You can manage them in here uh, with your different networks within your organizations. So each organization has networks below it and you can add. So if I clicked on this one, for example, I can add a new network by hitting this button there and I can put another network in there. Uh, I've just got one called Test Genius Network. So I'm going to double click on that. And I know I'm in that because it's highlighted up here. So I've got this network selected. It's telling me that I've got one offline switch and one offline access point. That's because I already have a couple of things that I was testing in this account. But this switch is currently not in there. This ECS 1112 FP is currently not listed. So I can have a click switches here or I can go across to my dashboard on the left and then click on switches. And it will show me the switches that are registered to this organization and this actual network. I've currently got one in there, uh, which is offline at the moment. And I need to add this one. Now, if I'm doing this on my mobile phone, I can uh, scan the QR code underneath. And the, the way that I do this is I can add to my inventory list. So I go down to the bottom corner and you can see the little building and I go to inventory and it shows me everything that I have uh, for my inventory for this particular organization. And you can see that I've got an access point and a switch, both offline. And now I need to add this device. So I'm going to top right hand corner, register device, click on that button there. And you can see you can use the mobile app. So if I had a mobile app, it would be easier because you can just scan the QR code. Um, I haven't got my mobile, I'm doing it all on the desktop. So I'm going to flip it over to get the serial number. I'm going to add it on through the serial number. If I can spell it right first time. and click register. Okay, so now it's registered it fine. So register it through my serial number. And then now I should see this switch populate into my inventory list. Now it might take it a while on here to populate because what it does now, it's got the serial number that now goes to the Ingenious Cloud and registers this particular switch with this particular serial number to my uh, account and to my organization that I've set up in the cloud. So like I said, it could take a bit to populate. You can see it's added there. Um, but I can't do anything with it yet until it actually adopts into my cloud account. Um, you can sort of, before it starts showing the full uh, details of the switch, you can see that it's missing its name and a few other bits. If I go back to my dashboard, uh, and you can see there the one offline, and there's nothing actually, it's only got the one offline from my previous uh, testing. So it's not even got the one I've just added because now in my inventory, I should have two switches on one access point. So you can see it's starting to populate now as it starts to get more. So I'm going to pick up on the ECS 1112 FP, hit the little radio button on the side, and I want to assign this to a network. So I have this switch here. So I'm going to assign to a network. I've only got one network within my organization for this particular organization. So I'm going to assign this um, switch to this organization and this network. Click the radio button, click apply. And then this will then set this switch into that um, network on this organization that I have selected. So I know I'm maybe I'm making it sound a bit complicated than it is, but it's not once you get the understanding of what the structure tree is. So now I should be able to go to my dashboard. Now it won't show up in there again for the reason I said earlier, It'll probably take it a while just to populate. So now I've got two switches showing under this particular network, uh, but it's saying that nothing's online at the moment. So it might take it, um, you know, five minutes to actually populate. Um, what I'll do while that's going on, because I'm going to, you can get to the switch, but it's not showing in the actual main dashboard. So if I go and click on switches, I can click on there on the dashboard. I can go over to my manage here and click on switches there, pick up on the switch that I want. And then right at the end, I show a button that says details and click on that. And this will then take me to my switch. So hopefully when we get back uh, to the end of the video and I'll flip back to the dashboard, we should be able to see the switch in there. Uh, because what we should see on here, we should see that port number nine is being used for the uplink and it's currently not showing. Um, and what I will do as well, before I start talking through the other bits and pieces, I will uh, just plug this access point in so you can see what the PoE and how that looks like further down. So this is a cloud enabled, ingenious, um, PoE powered access point. I don't know which model this one is actually. It's uh, an ECW120. So I'm just going to plug this one into uh, port one on the switch. 
And I'll get this powering up so you can see it um, on the actual summary page. So I'm just going to plug that in. I'm not going to adopt it in any way. Um, it is actually still, I think it's part of this network actually, but I'm not going to uh, put it into the actual network if it's not there. I purely want it plugged in so I can show you the actual, um, the power draw and how it's shown on the PoE port within this summary page. So you can see at the moment, the real time uh, meters are taking a while to populate. And that's purely because this is sending all this information to the Ingenious Cloud Service. So it's a bit of patience here give it five or 10 minutes to sort itself out. And if it hasn't sorted itself out, by the time I get to the end of these um, different tabs, then obviously I'll have to uh, pause the video and come back to it to show it you. So along the top, we've got all the model name, firmware number, and again, when it uh, gets to updating the server, that will show in a minute, Mac address, subnet, IP address, gateways, you've got a topology one um, in there, and obviously some, so that's a general summary of the actual switch itself. And then underneath that, you have the drills down a bit more, so you've got the summary of the ports. Again, this is pretty standard. Uh, total PoE utilization by port. So in here, it will show you if this is plugged into port one, which I've just plugged it into, it should show me uh, how much it draws, probably about three watts, something like that. Um, in that particular port, bearing in mind, I've got 130 watts total. Then got IP address in. It's currently set to DHCP. I can set a static IP address if I want. Uh, it's not showing again because of the reasons I said earlier. You've got your VLAN settings. And then a photo that you can add to your account there to sh take a picture of this. Uh, for example, if it's in the corner of a warehouse, then you could take the picture and then show that to somebody else and say that's where it physically is if it goes down or for whatever reason. Next up on the list is system settings. So in here, uh, we can tick this uh, lock here, which unlocks these. We have a spanning tree protocol. Again, I'm not gonna go into any detail of any of these settings. I'm purely here just to um, go through and show you what options you have for this manage switch. So you've got a spanning tree protocol, you've got LLDP, voice over VLAN, so if you're using IP phones, you've got quality of service, uh, IGMP snooping, you've got jumbo frames, and then your local GUI. Next one up is your port settings. So again, uh, I like the way this is quite spread out. Uh, so it's giving you all the information in one hit, or as much as it can do uh, for each different port. Again, most switches do this, but this does it quite nice. It's quite a nice environment to look at. Um, and you can see all the different things. You've got your label, enable, voice VLAN, your speed, PoE, uh, PVID, your untagged VLAN, uh, isolation, your tagged VLANs, your rate, your flow, and your quality of service stuff. So all the stuff in there, and you can configure in here. You have, then have your mirror, then your link aggregation, if you're aggregating this to something else and then your logs at the end. Um, it's starting to, the CPU and the memory is showing up, but it's still not populated the rest of this here. Uh, and I doubt it's still showing me anything at the moment. It's not showing me the uplink port or it's not showing me port one either. So, um, got to go back to the dashboard and see if it's brought it online. So the switch now is showing online. So that's, so it's now registered to the cloud account. So at least we've got that. Obviously we've got the one offline still, which I explained earlier. So if I click on the, um, and it's showing the one access point online as well. Uh, so I'm gonna click back into the switch and see if it's brought the actual um, ports up so you can see the PoE budget. So I'm gonna pick that one, click on details, and let's see if we've got anything in here. Well, now we've got it, yeah, so it's now populated. So now we've got the serial number showing, we've got the subnet mask IP address, we've got everything now populated, so now it's actually, uh, connected to the cloud.ingenious.ia uh, properly. Uh, you've got your ports under here. Uh, you've got your port one, which is the one we plugged into, and it's showing it's got the PoE with a small electrical sign there. So it's got uh, PoE on port one. Port nine is your uplink, indicated with that arrow. I'm using uh, 3.8 watts, uh, which is 2% of my total 130 watt budget. Uh, and you can see there that port one, it says there, uh, and the utilization is 3.8 watts on port one. So it looks like you've got 29 watts per port. Um, and then obviously you've got the DHCP here. So overall, it's quite a high spec, um, small uh, business class switch. Uh, and I really like it. I like the cloud stuff. I'm not so keen on the uh, NSky and the EasyMaster stuff, but this cloud key stuff, 
I really like the environment that it works in. And once I've got my head around how it's working, uh, I can understand where they're going with it. Uh, and I'd say if you're going down the Ingenious route, um, just be careful on what you're picking and make sure you pick the right stuff um, for your particular uh, business application, if that's what it's going into. Okay, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please do subscribe to my channel. Please hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video and also hit the bell icon to be alerted to any new videos I make. And thanks again for watching the Computer Lab on YouTube.